There's a war being fought. It's not a battle between two large armies where the lines between friend and enemy are clearly defined. With such subtle and covert tactics being used, you won't even know you're a target until it's too late. You do everything on this machine. Talk to your friends, manage your money, plan your day, educate yourself. It's a twist of fate, but the biggest threat from the information age is the very thing that made it happen. Because when someone can see your search history from 2 in the morning when you can't sleep, that's an insight into your soul going deeper than a confession. If a computer is the bicycle of the mind, the internet is the road, then this is the map of you. And you might want to look after that. Keeping safe online is really important, and one of the main tools being used on the front lines are hash functions. When you set up an online account, you create a username and a password. They get saved to a database and become the keys to your identity. Naturally, people who own the database can see this information and use it to become you. That's why they're encouraged to hash your password and store the signature instead, because every time you hash the phrase password1, you always get the same signature. And that's why a good hash is so powerful, because that's the only way to get that signature. This doesn't even have to be for one word, it can work for massive amounts of data. If someone told you there was thousands of files and only one of them was different, it's a lot less effort to compare the signatures rather than checking each file one word at a time. That's why a program's hash is like its passport telling you it's safe for you to let it through your virtual border. But if a hash function gives the same value for two different files or phrases, it's considered broken and shouldn't be used. When a popular one gets cracked like this, that's a big problem. This year, when SHA-1 was finally broken by the CWI and Google, it caused a lot of problems in the software industry. Using a chosen prefix attack, they used a precise piece of data that was injected into one of the files, causing it to numerically align with the other during the calculation. With SHA-1 dying a slow death over the next year, it's time you learned about the second installment of the SHA series, where like all good sequels, it sticks to the same basic principles as its predecessor, but in a bigger budget and more seeds and a larger signature size. This is the algorithm that makes it happen. Don't be intimidated because all it's doing is breaking the phrase up into its most fundamental parts, then mathematically stretches, folds and slams them back together until it's left with something that looks very different from the original phrase. First, each letter would be converted to binary, so ABC becomes this. A 1 is added to the end to mark the end of the phrase. Next, get the phrase size. In this case, 8 bits per letter makes it 24 bits long. Convert it to binary and add it to the end, and the rest gets padded with zeros to get the block to the correct size. The message schedule of 64 words needs to be created from the block, but with each word only being 32 bits long, we only have enough for 16 words. This formally describes how to create the other words. To get the 17th word, get the word 15 places back, in this case the second word, make two copies of it and right rotate one of them by 7 places. This means each number moves one space to the right 7 times, and when a number falls off the edge it comes back on the other side. Right rotate the other by 18 places, then right shift the last by 3. A right shift means when a number falls off the edge, they are replaced with zeros on the other side. Do the same for the word 2 places back, the 15th word except right rotate by 17 and 19 places, then right shift by 10. Add it to the word 16 places back, the first word, and the word 7 places back, the 10th word. And all these together and this is the 17th word. Proceed like this until we get 64 words in total. It's fascinating watching this structure take form. It's like a life form using its own DNA to guide its own unique augmentation as it matures. Even the slightest difference between phrases will give you radically different results. This heightened sensitivity towards these changes is called the avalanche effect. The last part of the algorithm uses the 5 initial hash values and the 64 constant values. To keep things consistent, this is what they look like as binary. Just like SHA-1, converting between base 2 and base 16 is why the final signature looks the way it does. To get T1, use the value of E and create 3 new words by right rotating by 6, 11 and 25, and do an exclusive OR of these. Run the choose function over E, F and G. Get the first K constant, the value of H and the first word from the message schedule and calculate the AND of all these. To get T2, run the majority function over A, B and C, then create 3 new words by right rotating A by 2, 13 and 22, finally getting the exclusive OR of all these, then swap around the values like below except for E and A which have some modifications attached. This is what the values look like in hex after the first round. Each consecutive round morphs and twists these values from a defined form into a scrambled mess. This continues 64 more times. Lastly, add the values we had initially for the hashes to the corresponding final values and concatenate them all together. If you took all the information there was about you online and passed it through this function, this might be the most concise way to express you. Well, not this, this is something else, and for a bit of fun there's a clue in the video. Educate yourself on some of the history of hashes and maybe you can guess the original phrase. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe, and let me know if there's any other algorithms you want me to try to cover. Good luck!